Good afternoon, everybody. This is Leslie Ruddy with Marker's Brain Trust. And uh, today I'm actually a solo because we've got um, the rest of the company is actually doing work as well as if this isn't, but you know what I mean, right? So uh, Dan Thies is off working with uh, PPC clients, onboarding some new people. Um, Michelle Chance is working with some of our uh, smaller business people and consulting with them, building some email uh, sequences for one of them. And then Corey Burke is running the factory to create uh, to create content for our many content marketing clients. So you got just me today. And so the subject of today's uh, hangout will be email. And in particular, because we're on holiday season here, how you can best use email right away in order to really make a, uh, a big change in Q4 for all of you e-commerce people, right? So, all right, let's go ahead and get started. Of course, as always, add questions to the chat, and I will not be able to see them during the presentation, but I will get through all of those questions at the end of the presentation. I figure there's probably about 30 to 40 minutes of presentation, and then I'll have lots of time to address your questions individually. So I guess with that, why don't we go ahead and get started on time, which I know will confuse most of you because we usually don't do that. So let me uh, get that happening right now. I don't have to do present to everyone, do I? Share screen. Share screen. Hall of Mirrors. Favorite part of it. Right. Well, we'll see if PowerPoint works this time. We've had problems with it in the past, but if it doesn't, we'll switch over to PDF. So I'll play from start. All right, let's see here. As soon as we see a screen, if we see a screen. All right. Okay, we, that's a little bit strange, and I'm seeing two different screens, but I guess I'll go with it. Um, so, email push button profit from your best prospects and customers. I know, kind of a bold statement. Um, two bold statements. One is: Is email really your best prospects and customers? I claim that it absolutely is. And whether you can do push button profit with email, well, we've done it. So. That's not even arguable. If you actually have an email list that you that you promote to on a regular basis, if you've kept that um, if you've kept that email list healthy, then you know that that first part of that statement is true. And uh, we'll talk today about how you actually do that and how we can help you do that. All right, so let's move on. So first of all, one of the one of the elephants in the room, I suppose, is the, whether or not anybody actually uses email anymore. Uh, just like SEO, I think that the death of email has been declared in a number of times. Uh, yes, email is absolutely used. Now, this is, uh, this is in, I forget exactly which year this study was done, um, done fairly recently. Interestingly, 88% of people, respondents, you know, in the survey, uh, use smartphone to check email. Now, the respondents, the people surveyed here were white-collar business professionals. And it, it wasn't just about, oops. Sorry. It wasn't just about the B2B, it was about everything they purchased, you know, everything, all of their email you know, usage, right? 70% um, of them check email while watching TV. Um, maybe they don't have TiVo, who knows, right? Check email in bed, that's a really bad idea to do for your personal relationships, by the way. Uh, check email while on vacation, like who, has, who of us has not done that? I'll be on vacation, I'll be checking email. <laughs> Those two things really shouldn't go together, but we all do it. And then 42% of check email while in the bathroom. That's very disturbing. Probably more disturbing than that is it's recur referred to uh, as the second office. <laughs> that would be me. 43% check email on the phone. Also not a great idea unless you're on hold <laughs> or on a boring conference call. And then finally, this one is like the worst of all, checking email while you're driving. Really horrible idea. If texting was bad, email's got to be worse, right? And respondents spent six hours per day checking email. That seems, it seems extraordinarily high, even for a junkie like me, but those are the, you know, those are the numbers. Um, the other thing is the way people use email, you know, with all this social media stuff that the kids are talking about, but still, you know, email is still like the lingua franca of the web. 
Uh, when people get something they want to share, they are more, far more likely than not to share it using email. Um, and I know that's, I look at my own behavior, I know that's true. Um, you know, when other people, if they're close enough to me that they have Skype, they might use that instead. But it's email followed by distantly, a, you know, Skype, and then following that, if they really expect me to get it on Facebook, I mean, they obviously don't know me. <laughs> um, this the other one is a 2012 survey where 91% of respondents said they check their email daily. Well, now that's not, that shouldn't be surprising. Um, <clears throat> and, and in fact, I bet they're, they're checking way more than once a day. 77% uh, claimed that email was a preferred channel for, and this was the, you know, quote from the survey itself, permission-based promotional messages. That's how we want to be promoted to. And you'll notice the very distant runner-ups right there of direct mail at 9% and Facebook at 4%. Wow. Okay. So as a minimum, email has it, you know, 10 to 1 over, over the nearest competitor. So really, the money is in the list. I mean, what you may have heard, you know, through all those internet marketing gurus such as ourselves and others, well, that is true. That really is true. Uh, but how much? Well, now, a while back, I actually did a survey of all of my, uh, you know, marketing partners and friends in the IMS community. And, you know, I'll be honest, I'm not going to, you know, name names here about who's on the low end and who's on the high end, but you can probably figure it out. The largest, most, uh, sorry, the largest, least targeted lists have the lowest per name value, you know, 50 cents per name. And I should have pointed this out. That's on a yearly basis. Sorry. Uh, that's kind of important to note. So if you have... You know, a thousand names, say, and only fifty cents per name per year. Okay, that's you know, that's not exactly retirement money. However, at the other end of this range, we have personally experienced years where the number was fifty per name. And uh, without putting too fine a pencil point on this, uh, one hundred percent of the revenue that that comes into this company is from email marketing. Uh, the great irony that Dan and I have to face is as SEO and PPC professionals, the way we actually build our business is with email. Um, but that's only if you do it right. And uh, somewhere in that range, you know, 50 cents to $50 per name per year is still doing it right, as you know, with a caveat that if you only have a thousand people and you're only getting 50, 50 cents a name, that's not good. That's not good. But on the other hand, if you have 400,000, you can make that work, right? But what does doing it right look like? Well, let's do a start with wrong. This is wrong. Sell, 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 sell. And in that category, I would also place coupon, 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 right? Nobody needs a coupon until they're ready to actually buy. And, and so there's sort of a strong implication there that you're selling when you send them a coupon. How about doing it right? How about content, content, sell, content, content, sell, sell, right? where at least half of all your emails are content, even if they do have a pitch as part of it. Sure, do something, you know, information-based, right? Just give them something of good value and then provide a coupon. That's fine, all right? Nobody is going to ding you about that. But coupon only, selling only, promo only, no, that's not doing it right. All right. The difference between these two is in the nature of relationship. What is your relationship to your list? Because the real money you make from your list is the size of your list times the quality of the relationship with your list. If all you're doing is selling to them, well, you know, that's not a very good relationship. That's a take, 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 take instead of a give. The way you build a relationship, on the other hand, is to give before you receive. That trains them to open. If they're getting stuff of value on a regular basis, they're going, you're going to have a higher open rate than not. You also want to reward them for clicking. Now, that doesn't mean giving them money, and it doesn't mean giving them coupons. What it means is if they click through to your site, and that's good stuff, that's the important part, right? That rewards them to click through. What this does is it creates trust and a sense of reciprocity in your audience because you've given before you've re re received. Zig Ziglar, I think, said it best. You can get everything in life you want if you will just help enough other people get what they want. So what I want you to do is to think service to your community first and sales will follow. Not always easy for us, you know, you know, commercial folks to, to think that way, but that's how you build a strong relationship with your list. 
The way, in getting tactical about it, there are three sequences, email sequences that you need in order to really do that, in order to really cement a good relationship with your list. The first one is an onboarding sequence, and that's what happens immediately after somebody opts in. So maybe it's something, you know, lame, like sign up for our weekly newsletter. Maybe it's a little bit better, you know, sign up for our, you know, blog updates or sign up for free, ongoing free information or whatever. Maybe it's better than that. Maybe it's a free e-course, you know, delivered over the next five days or download this PDF and instantly get the seven secrets to whatever. Those are all uh, reasons for a person to give you an email address. And following that, you should give them some content. Well, obviously, if you promise a downloadable book, you better give them the downloadable book. But more than that, following that, there should be what we call a consumption sequence. There should be a sequence that helps them, and it reminds them to consume the content, reminds them of the value of that content. That is the onboarding process of taking a new lead and bringing them onto your email list. You want to do that right away while they're, <clears throat> you know, they're, uh, uh, you know, the emotions are hot about the thing that you convince them to, to get on your list for. You also need promotional sequences. And now, these can be standalone emails, but it's better if they're not standalone. It's better to sell using a sequence of three or more emails. Uh, that's That way, you can actually tell a story. You can, uh, we talk a lot about story arc, for example, in launches. Uh, very important that promotions have some sort of reason why and some sort of notion of scarcity and urgency and all those other things. In order to tell that story coherently, usually it's better to do it as a, as a sequence. Sure, you can do it as standalone. Um, it'll absolutely work better than not promoting at all. But I'm just saying that sequences are typically better when it comes to actually total sales. And then finally, there's the nurturing sequence. Now, these first two, onboarding promotion, we're not going to spend any time on today. And I'll tell you in a moment why. But those by themselves would be, each of those would be standalone webinars to, to deliver to you. And, and uh, instead, I want to get to nurturing because it is the key. Without a nurturing sequence, the others will not work. And let's, let's review that. If all we're doing is promotion, if all we have is promotion sequences, well, there we're sell, 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 sell. Okay. If all we have is an onboarding sequence, well, okay, maybe we can put a promo at the end of the onboarding sequence, which is, by the way, a great idea. But that gives us one shot to get that customer. And so they opt in, and seven days later, it's, they're gone, right? We don't have anything else to send them. So before you even consider those other two sequences, you should have a nurturing sequence so you can keep that lead alive long term. I don't know how many. I, it's probably close to 80% of the customers we were clients we work with. They have an email list, and they've never mailed it. Well, if you haven't mailed a, process, if you haven't mailed, uh, a, a contact in 180 days, most emailing platforms are going to tell you you should not and cannot in some cases because that, that contact is old enough that they will probably for, have forgotten about you and press the spam button. So if you haven't been mailing, starting to mail, well, there's a way we can go about doing that on a case-by-case -case basis depending on how, you know, what, that, what your list looks like. But in general, you have to touch people at least once a month typically a lot more frequently than that, and just to keep that email list alive. And if all you're doing is touching with promotion, all you're doing is you're burning up your list. Instead, you need to nurture them. What you have to do is keep an ongoing series of useful, valuable content in order to give that person of something of value so that when it comes time for you to do a promotion, they're alive and listening to you. Because permission is not a one-time event. If they opt in and they don't like your emails, they're going to opt out. And you have to allow them to opt out. It's the law. <laughs> All right? And so permission is something that you get every time you email. And nurturing is how you retain that permission. By giving them something of value, they don't want to opt out because then they would lose those things of value. That's what makes promotion possible, because as long as they're opted in and as long as they're opening your emails, now they'll open your promotional emails as well, all right? So this is what our nurturing email looks like as an example of nurturing mails, all right? Um, 
And of course, it's, it's split in two parts there. It's about 600 pixels wide, and it's fairly long. We'll get to the particular format and the reason for it in just a moment. But let's walk through each of the pieces. So first, at the top, we need to have our branding. Now, you know, again, you want to have the person, you, you know, the, the prospect or customer, aware of your existence on a regular basis. And so you should give them some you know, visual or other cue that, oh, yes, I know this person. This is not spam. I actually did sign up for their list. The best way to do that that we know, frankly, is a header of some sort that has you know, a logo and name. Okay? Uh, then the top of the very first item in the email is a feature post. In this, what we try to do, I mean, we actually succeed. We don't try. We try with 100% success to create a, uh, an email that has a graphic in the feature post, a photo or a diagram in the, in the, in the top post. It grabs the person's attention and gets them into the email. Yeah, you wouldn't have to do that. It would work without that, but that's always better. If you look at what LinkedIn does with LinkedIn Pulse, same thing. They have lots of, uh, lots of titles and, and descriptions in the email, but the top one always has a graphic associated with it for the same reason we do. Below that, we have on the left-hand side a column of what we call commentaries. And on the right-hand side, a column, what we call, you know, news items, news briefs. And, and there will be, you know, four of those uh, of titles and snippets on the, on the left, and there will be ten headlines only on the right. That's just to give the, the reader of this email lots to choose from. What we're trying to do is we're trying to make sure that they're interested in something, at least something, in that email. So that every single email we send has a very high likelihood of engaging them, at least in some small manner. Below the news items, we also have our, our social icons. So this allows them to connect with us in those other channels. And I've talked about this on a recent blog post about traffic loops. You want to make sure that every traffic channel you're using supports your other traffic channels. So that if I first get them by opting in and I send them this email, and then they can also click the follow us on Twitter or Facebook button. And so now they're seeing me there as well, right? And then down below this, we have a promotional block, which we'll come back to in a moment. Remember I said delivering content and promotion simultaneously is okay as long as it's heavily weighted in the content direction. That's the reason we put this at the bottom instead of the top. And then finally, at the very end of the email, can spam. We want to have a link to the website. We wanted the physical address and a link to unsubscribe. That's just required by you know, US law, right? And then finally, and most importantly, remember that very first stat we talked about is it's all mobile. It has to be mobile responsive. 88% of people are reading their email on mobile. So uh, it's just it's absolutely critical that whatever you do in, in this kind of mailing is it be mobile responsive. You can get away with non-mobile for kind of text-based stuff. What we do with very uh, short text promos, for those of you on our list, you know uh, that uh, the, the emails that I write tend to be very um, short text. Well, it's not really text. It's actually HTML, but it looks like text. Whereas the stuff that uh, Dan writes typically is much longer. Um, it does. There's not one way that's right or right or wrong. <laughs> you get similar results both ways. Um, and you can you can do that in a way that's that's not um, where you don't have to go to a lot of a lot of work to make that mobile response or at least it's somewhat attractive on mobile. However, for the nurturing campaign, you want to make absolutely certain that everybody can read it whenever they get it because that's how they're going to get trained to really open your stuff. Now, where does that content come from? Well, it comes from our blog. Now, here the picture of the blog you're going to notice is not is not matching the picture of the website, or sorry, of the, of the email, because we do so much content that it's already rolled off those first two spots. And so since, the, since our last content email went out on Monday, we've posted two or three times since then. But this is the, the shape of our homepage, and we've, descri you know, we've described this, we've shown this before on, on previous Hangouts. But all of the content we send in email actually comes from our blog. Well, you say, oh, gosh, that's redundant. Well, <laughs> no, unless you happen to have no, you know, you know, nothing to do other than to look at all of our channels all the time. I mean, the fact is that all of our commentaries also go to Google+, LinkedIn, 
Twitter, and Facebook. <laughs> and some of our content is also on YouTube, all of our Hangouts, for example. So no, a lot of our content is in multiple locations, and that's what you want to have happen. Uh, the reason we put together a digest email, uh, digest uh, for, for email on a weekly basis is because the majority of people are frankly not reading our blog. So by hitting them an email on every, uh, every week, we had that opportunity to surface content that was gonna be important to them and engage with them in that channel. Right? So this is how the system works. And so let's start over here on the, on the left hand left hand side of the screen. Uh, there's a blog, and you'll see you know, it has this you know this feature area and the news area. It also has an invisible category. We'll talk about here in just a moment. Well, so we pull five commentaries, and all this works off of uh, RSS. So we pull five commentaries from the blog. We took, pull 10, 10 news briefs, and then as I said, there's a there's a special category here. We'll get to in just a moment. We then go through a templating system, so using some custom software I built. We take an email template, which has been designed to be mobile responsive on just uh, every device I could find, actually. Then we build an email from that. We create the email copy. And then we pull our list out of our content management system, which happens to be Infusionsoft. We combine that together and do an API call to Amazon SES. Now, SES stands for, as you might imagine, Simple email service. You know, the guys at Amazon are brilliant, um, and apparently they, they believe in simple naming conventions. <laughs> so the the way SES works is, is just fantastic. I mean, we, we can set up domain keys. Um, SPF is already handled by them. Uh, there's uh, the, the, the mailing itself is highly robust, very high deliverability. They're, they're on top of um, ISPs all the time to make sure uh, that they get the highest deliverability possible. Uh, they're watching the people who use their platform, uh, just as all email uh, providers do. And so there's a certain amount, if you're going to use it, obviously you've, you've got to use it right. And it's incredibly cheap. OMG. So as an Infusionsoft user, uh, once we go beyond our uh, monthly allotment, okay, we end up paying $2 per thousand emails. Which is actually not that bad. I mean, for us, that's it's not, I won't call it a round off error, but it's certainly uh, it's it's not one of those things where we've never been able to make the ROI work. You know what I mean? However, Amazon, it's ten cents per thousand, a factor of twenty lower. And so, when you get into the business as we are of mailing almost once a day, uh, you start looking at those kind of differences. Okay, uh, still only a few hundred dollars a month, but it's a difference that's worth optimizing. All right, so what are the, the key points I want you to, to, to look at here and understand? First of all, email rocks. If you think email is dead, think again. It's actually the single best marketing platform available. I mean, nothing beats it. Even SEO and PPC do not beat email. Uh, the fact is you need, you need search social, and, and, uh, and if you can, and you can do it, paid advertising in order to get email addresses. But once you have an email address, Gosh, you know, it could be all you need. Now, there's some advantages to amplifying email and, and social and some things like that. We'll talk about it in a different hangout, but email is just killer. Subscribers are your very best visitors. Why? Because they're warm. They already know you. You've already given them some things of value. If, if that's assuming you've given them stuff of value. If you haven't, then they're not going to make you any money at all. They're going to hate you. They're going to unsubscribe. Nurturing really does make you money. You know, it's like, oh, I'm gonna have to do all this content and I'm not getting anything for it. And my click-through rate on my promo is really low. And so, you know, I, I don't think this nurturing works. You gotta think a little bit longer term than that. What we do in all of our uh, nurturing emails is we campaign track it so we know exactly what the click-throughs are, who's clicking on the promo and that sort of thing. And that's it's really important to measure that, uh, that measure to, to measure the amount of engagement you're getting email. However, don't think for a moment that just because somebody didn't click something, they didn't get value out of it. Maybe they only read the snippet. Maybe all they said is, huh, that's really cool. I'll get to it later. And it can be much later. We get people clicking on emails that were sent two years ago. Um, you can, uh, in Infusionsoft, we see that in our activity stream. We can see that they clicked what email? I don't even remember sending that email. Okay, it's 24 months old. Of course, I don't remember. Uh, so email has very, very long shelf life. 
and you need to be thinking about it in those same terms in addition to realizing that it truly is instant gratification whenever you mail. If you have a well-nurtured list, if you've been taking care of them and giving them things of value, when you mail, you will make money and, it will, and you'll make that within a very short time period. Uh, trust me on that. So with that said, hey, wouldn't you like to have a meal, uh, a, a meal an, a, an email just like this for your business? And isn't it a good time to do it? This is Q4. If you're an e-commerce person, if you have a big a fourth quarter because of the holidays, now is about as late as you can start and really make a big change in Q4. And emailing, like I said, once you get it started, it can pay you very rapidly. So it's what if you were mailing by Halloween, let's suppose. You know, that will give you two or three or four mails before you start getting into Thanksgiving and Black Friday and Cyber Monday. By then, your list will have already seen mail from you and will already begin to be nurtured and believe you as, you know, see you as an expert and feel some reciprocity. And that email, the, the, the visits you're going to get from that email is the very best traffic you can get that's free. Okay, is it as targeted as PPC? Depends on how well you've done AdWords. <laughs> However, these people at least know, like, and trust you to some level much higher than any of the other free traffic channels you can get. And in fact, higher than any paid traffic channel as well. It gets the highest engagement as a result. The fact is that you don't have as nearly as many walls to break down with a subscriber as you do with other forms of traffic. Because you've already done that. You've already gotten them to opt in. Even if they're a customer and they opt in just because they're a customer. Hey, they're a customer. They paid you money and presumably didn't like return the merchandise and hate you and you know badmouth you on Yelp. That would be a special case. Assuming if all that's true, they probably opted out too, so it's not a problem. Anyone who's still opted on your list at least has a level of relationship with you you cannot get in any other medium. That's why email gets higher engagement than any other medium. Right? Subscribers are therefore what we call warm leads. You know, these are people who are not seeing you for the first time. They at least have some concept of what you stand for and what you stand against. They are your most important people to be marketing to. And that's what makes your email list your highest performing asset if you treat them right. And that's the key bit. You have to treat them right by nurturing. So how would you like to do that? We have a done-for-you nurturing system. It's part of our content management system. Um, and so as a single service, we build uh, 15 blog posts a week. They're completely unique. They're used on your site and nowhere else. We socialize those on the four chief platforms, which are me, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and LinkedIn. We amplify one of those posts on Facebook, which gives us far more reach and engagement. And then we build a content-rich email and send it weekly. Oh, by the way, as part of this nurturing campaign, of course, you're also getting search and social as a bonus. It's flat rate priced. It doesn't matter how many people are on our list. We create and post all the content, all 15 items. We socialize them through our own system. We pay the Facebook amplification fees on one a week. So you, at every, every week, from actually it's from Tuesday to Tuesday, you have the Monday post being amplified. So you always have a post in the wild that's being amplified on Facebook. We pay all the mailing fees, the middling. Mailing fees are not huge, but we handle all of it. And it's $1,497 a month. Now to put that in perspective, that is less than one full-time minimum wage employee. And that's an employee that you would have to train. <laughs> Good luck with that. And hope that they get it right, uh, more luck required. And then, oh, by the way, are you sure you got it right? If you haven't done this yourself, um, you know, maybe you're a Link Liberation 3 customer, in which case you, you, you have a pretty good clue of what we do. But unless you've actually done it, there's a whole lot of details. So you could just have us do it for you, but realize that the holidays are coming fast. You know, as I record this, we're three weeks away from Halloween. Could you go later? Yes, maybe. But can I guarantee if you go later than today or tomorrow or Monday, you know, can I guarantee you're going to get onboarded by, by Halloween? No, I can't. Um, and the reality is, if you come in today on our service, 
uh, you're going to have to be on top of our emails and make sure that you get on everything to us in time so that we can get you started. We can do it, but I'm just saying, you got to want it. you got to want it. And we can't break the speed of light. The fact is, there's a lot to set up, and uh, it has to be set up correctly or things go really badly. So we can really only take four more by Halloween. Now, we would normally be able to onboard more people than that, but we're in the process of onboarding, still onboarding, some of our new customers and moving our existing content management clients onto the email platform. And so we've got you know, dozens, literally dozens of, of people we're working with over the next two or three weeks. In order to get started, you need to get on my calendar. And that's, and I'll put this in the chat, but it's seobt.co, that's co not, not com, okay? That's our Colombian affiliate. <laughs> so seobt.co slash Leslie Rohde 45. That's a 45 minute block on my calendar and we need to talk before you come in. I want to look at your business, have a discussion with you about your email list, look at your analytics, and, uh, and then you, know, you and I can decide together whether or not this makes sense for your business. All right, so let's, um, I'm gonna like, get out of full screen mode here, and I'll put this in the chat, as I said. Um, if I can actually just see, stop sharing. Stop sharing. Good. Okay, so we're back live, and I'll drop this. I'll drop this in chat so you folks can have that, and then uh, let's get to questions. So, I didn't talk to myself. I don't know if I could write. Yeah, there we go. Okay, now bear with me a second here. Let me plug this in for guys. Um, okay. Um, oh, how often do you survey your list? Uh, we've been doing it, well, we have two different surveys we run. Uh, one of them is about type of business, the other size of business, essentially. Um, and so the, the, the questions are orthogonal, and from that we get, we, we join the results in the future. So we make for a shorter survey. Uh, we also have a survey as part of the Hangout sign up which is a very, very brief three questions, I think. And it's focused only on the kind of content that people want to hear about. So uh, not, not the same kind of survey. We do recommend surveying the list more often than what we're doing it. We've been doing those surveys twice a year. Uh, we're actually going to do a, a content piece on a weekly basis, you know, probably maybe starting next month. We'll see. Um, still working on some of the technology associated with that. Um, and that that will that will be kind of a, a, a series of different questions in, in a survey. Um, what we do expect to do over a, a period of time is collect a profile of who's on our list, but doing it a very small number of questions at a time. Okay. Um, nothing beats having access to your own, very own traffic source. There's there's no doubt about that. Um, our uh, <clears throat> for us it's been as high. As fifty dollars per year per per lead per name, um, and it, it can be that high for any business, um, depending upon how well you treat your list, how much you clean it, and the price point of your product. Right? Those are those are the kind of the, that's the volume I can fill. Um, if you're selling toilet paper, it's going to be a little bit harder to get to that. But on the other hand, you have a way you know a far larger list of people who'd be responding to toilet paper as opposed to content marketing services, at least I expect that's true. And so your mileage will differ, but email marketing is essentially, not quite, essentially free, and it's certainly push button money. Anytime you want more money, you hit send, and you will get some money. Um, you've gotta be careful to take care of that list in the interim, and that's where the quote unquote cost is, right, is to nurture them. Uh, but like anything, I and mean, if you don't take care of your house, it's going to decline in value. Um, and that's that's the same with emails. You have to take care of the asset. Okay. Uh, you're welcome, Maximilian. All right. Well, um, seems to be a really light day for questions. Um, okay, I already answered that. Um, great. Um, okay. So uh, that, that link again, I post I post it in chat. If you want to get involved with us on that, then by all means, please get on my calendar so we can talk. Um, and the other thing is, what else do you want to hear about 
for those of you who are e-commerce people, what else do you want to hear about before uh, that point in time where you don't want to hear about anything at all because you're busy packing and shipping, right? I mean, you've really basically got about a two to three week window right here where you could get something implemented. And then after that, I mean, you're probably batting down the hatches to ride out the holidays. And so if there's something else that we need to talk about, well, you know, we've talked about shopping ads and Dan is busy talking to people about shopping ads in their business. Um, the other the other piece, the one that, that gets uh, near immediate return, is email marketing. Anyone with an e-commerce business, I would recommend you do both of them. Um, but it's really about how much you know how much money you can throw at the problem and what your you know what the ROI is, and that's the reason we want to talk first. Um, let's see, how many other email marketing solutions have you used besides Infusionsoft? Why would you recommend it over other solutions like AWeber or MailChimp? Um, so I don't really characterize Infusionsoft as an email marketing solution first and foremost. It's a content, uh, sorry, content. It's a customer relations management system uh, with a very heavy focus on email marketing, as opposed to something like Salesforce, which is also a CRM but has a heavy focus on what I would call phone interaction. Uh, Infusionsoft is different than AWeber and MailChimp in terms of the level of automation and customer tracking or customer stuff you can do. Okay, yeah, AWeber, for example, um, you know, I don't really have much of a contact record there. I don't have any information about the customer other than their email address and their first name. Whereas in Infusionsoft, I have pages and pages of information about them. It's integrated with our shopping cart, with our affiliate marketing program. I have custom fields, and tags, and a bunch of other ways in order to differentiate one, one customer from another or prospect from another. Uh, MailChimp, similarly, that's a mailing platform. It's not really a, a CRM. Infusionsoft, um, you know, I've said this before, I and mean, it's not a plug. Um, well, I guess it is a plug, except that there's no, I don't get paid for it. Uh, I would not run any. I would not run a web business without Infusionsoft. I can stitch together third-party tool. I can stitch together tools to make something do what Infusionsoft does. But once having having done that, um, it will cost almost as much as Infusionsoft. Um, so yeah, I, I fully encourage you if you, if you're looking at uh, a high level of not a high, high degree of segmentation in your customer base. So if you want to differentiate. This person's interested in PPC. This person's interested in SEO. This person is interested in something else. These are the people who identify themselves as e-commerce. These are people who identify as lead gen. These people identify themselves as consulting agencies. Those are the kind of things that we use in order to do very focused emails so that we can talk to the right people with the right message without burning out the rest of the list. If I mail a message about consulting and I mail it to my whole list, I'm going to I don't know what the number would be, but probably by 70 or 80 percent would say, who cares? Um, probably not that high, it's more like 60 percent, I guess. If I mail something about e commerce to everybody on the, on the list, again, I'm going to hit some agency folks and I'm going to hit some lead, uh, lead generation folks that are not interested in that message. So, by doing some surveying and doing some segmentation and looking for who responds to what message, that gives me a lot better uh, ability to say the right thing to the right people. Um, if that helps. In fact, uh, that would be a, I mean, we could talk about that in detail, but it would be so focused on using Infusionsoft alone, it would almost be an Infusionsoft training, and I don't think that's probably an appropriate thing to do. Um, right, okay. Well, we're actually done before the top of the hour. Uh, that's that's an unusual, unusual feat. I guess it's because I'm doing it solo, so I don't have everybody else convincing, right? Uh, so next week, and actually I'm not sure what we're doing next week, Unfortunately, we've been kind of busy this week getting people ready for the holidays. And so uh, we'll be in touch. I mean, as we, when this replay goes out tomorrow, um, this is a Thursday as I record this, and it'll go out Friday, uh, we will have the topic and tease for, the, for next week's Hangout. And so by all means, for those of you signed up, you'll get, uh, you'll get that notice, and, uh, and we'll be talking to you then soon. So anyway, thanks for everybody for showing up. A couple dozen of you here. Uh, pretty light day, as I said, but uh, uh, hopefully we can uh, we can work together in the future. If you are an e-commerce person and you have a high fourth quarter, 
then you really ought to be, you know, getting on shopping ads if you're not doing them and emailing if you're not doing them. So thanks, everybody, for watching. This is Leslie Ruddy with the Marketers Brain Trust, and uh, we'll catch you next week. Bye-bye now.